Hello again, and welcome to another session of Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our service is uh, a collaboration of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, together with my sponsor, the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. The Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy is a uh, collaboration between the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Uh, today's cases uh, also come from the uh, Peggy and Charles Stevenson Cancer Center in, here in Oklahoma City, an NIH-designated uh, cancer center. Our patient is a 42-year-old woman who presents with a painless two-centimeter mass, uh, which is located in the vulva right beneath the right labia minora. So there's several things that live in that location and that we could think about. Certainly, squamous cells would be the squamous cell carcinoma would be the most common lesion uh, that we would be thinking about. So this came to uh, excision, um, and as you can see here, uh, it has a very uh, deeply invasive pattern extending into the subcutaneous uh, fat, um, roughly two centimeters in depth, two centimeters in width. Uh, we've got a little bit of ulceration, perhaps, of the surface epithelium, which is over here on the uh, far left of your screen. Uh, the tumor appears to be mostly small blue cell uh, type of lesion. Um, and as we look a little further, we can see that it has nests and cords of cells streaming through. It looks like we have a, a microcystic pattern here in several areas uh, of the tumor with a little bit of, well, if we go to higher magnification, we can see there's a little bit of pale uh, mucin-like uh, substance within the uh, centers of these. Uh, the stroma surrounding it is somewhat desmoplastic. And in areas we have sort of an inverted pattern with uh, almost hyaline uh, type appearance uh, to some of the central uh, product. As we look uh, a little bit further, we'll go back and maybe go to uh, the deep areas to see uh, what we have in terms of what's going on down here. Um, as you can see, this tumor uh, extends out into the fatty tissues and the sub uh, mucosal tissues, again with this small glandular pattern, and it provokes a desmoplastic uh, type response. So we can see here it uh, clusters around uh, vessels and um, looking for a perineural invasion uh, as a possible uh, additional finding in this uh, tissues, uh, not really seeing that right off. Um, well, here's some right here. Here we go. So you see here we have, uh, maybe, oh, maybe this is muscle. Yeah, I think this is muscle. Um, um, but the, uh, the pattern of the tumor uh, does not look like the usual uh, carcinomas that we see uh, in the uh, vulva. Uh, it's not a typical adenocarcinoma uh, because of this small microglandular and uh, syringomatous type of appearance. Um, immunohistochemistry could be useful in this situation. Uh, in fact, the immunohistochemical staining features uh, were consistent with a uh, uh, adenoid cystic type carcinoma. And that certainly fits with the morphology here um, and the pattern that we're seeing. Um, well, adenoid cystic uh, carcinoma is uh, an uncommon uh, uh, tumor in the vulva and often uh, clinically is mistaken for a Bartholin gland cyst. And the location that uh, we described for this case is uh, certainly uh, very suggestive of a Bartholin gland type lesion. Uh, it does have a fairly broad age range within adults from uh, uh, sort of mid-adulthood to older uh, adulthood. Uh, and the neurotropic behavior as seen elsewhere in the body can be seen uh, here as well. Now, although the specific um, uh, immunohistochemistry for vulvar adenoid cystic carcinoma has not been uh, well reported in the literature, uh, one would expect these to be cytokeratin positive. They also can be positive for SOX10, Vimentin, 
BCL2, P63, and CD117, uh, as was characterized in this uh, particular lesion. Um, and that will help to differentiate it from, uh, obviously, from uh, adenocarcinomas of uh, other origins. Um, differential diagnosis could, of course, include Bartholin gland adenocarcinoma. Uh, other salivary type lesions, like polymorphous low grade carcinoma, uh, could be considered in the differential, as well as a variety of other uh, skin adnexal carcinomas. And so I thought we might just look at a few of those uh, to compare. So um, these tumors uh, in the vulva are quite unusual, relatively rare, uh, but we do encounter them, some more often than others. Uh, clear cell hydratinoma, syringoma, these are the adnexal uh, tumors, both uh, benign and occasionally malignant variants. There are various uh, trichogenic uh, tumors that can be seen a little bit more lateral in the uh, vulva. Uh, and then, of course, the common skin lesions like seborrheic keratosis, keratoacanthoma, uh, occasionally an inverting follicular type keratoma, and basal cell carcinoma. Now, because we have uh, apocrine sweat glands here, you can also see some ma mammary type tumors. Um, and of course, Paget's disease, as we've described, is an intraepithelial um, carcinoma. Me melanoma and Merkel cell tumor, probably the most serious uh, malignancy, adeno you know, non cutaneous, uh, excuse me, non-common uh, malignancies that you'll see here uh, can also be described, but they don't enter into the differential here today. So this is an example, uh, again, of a skin tumor that has a very bottom-heavy appearance. Um, as we look at it at higher magnification, uh, we can see that it has characterized by uh, a combination of cell types, some uh, very clear cells, as you see here, with sharp uh, epithelial borders, a secondary uh, ductal uh, tubular type of uh, lesion um, uh, that characterizes a clear cell hydratinoma. Uh, this uh, appearance is also very, very characterized with these um, sort of uh, serrated uh, pattern uh, gaps um, in the uh, tumor that may be either be vascular or uh, just empty space, as you see here. Um, and uh, the cells have a very bland, uh, low-grade appearance uh, in contrast to those that we just saw uh, in the uh, adenoid cystic carcinoma. Uh, and again, the tumor is usually a deep uh, tumor uh, arising in uh, uh, the uh, adnexal sweat gland structures. Uh, another tumor that might be mistaken for this is the uh, common syringoma. And you can see here the resemblance to our adenoid cystic uh, tumor. Uh, with these small microcystic spaces uh, and uh, an infiltrative pattern. Uh, here, however, uh, the uh, uh, epithelial groups are much more benign appearing, uh, occasional comma-shaped uh, lesions with these very small microcystic structures, and a little bit of a cuticle uh, around the cysts, uh, as you see here, a little bit of eosinophilic uh, debris around those uh, lumina in some areas. Uh, would be more characteristic of syringoma. Of course, the most common location would be in the periorbital uh, uh, skin rather than in the uh, vulva. Uh, and finally, a uh, chondroid syringoma can also be uh, occasionally seen in this location. And here we see, again, this uh, syringomatous type of uh, epithelium, uh, benign low-grade sweat gland type epithelium with some uh, solid areas. Uh, and the chondroid element here, the stromal transformation with a very uh, chondroid appearance, uh, rich in uh, proteoglycans and so forth. Now, another lesion that might uh, also present in this case, in this case that is uh, also commonly seen, is the uh, syringocyst adenoma papilliferum. Uh, again, this is a vulvar skin. Uh, we can see this uh, very papillary uh, patterned lesion. It looks much like an introductal papilloma in the breast. Um, and here we see the uh, very bland uh, tubuloductal structures uh, with some surrounding uh, uh, myoepithelial type cells as well. And you can see here at high magnification, the very uh, bland cytology, widely spaced uh, nuclei 
uh, with no prominence of nucleoli. And this lesion would be uh, very sharply circumscribed. Uh, as you can see here, it has a nice nodular appearance, uh, not an infiltrative uh, appearance similar to our adenoid cystic carcinoma. So to return to the adenoid cystic carcinoma, here we see this infiltrative pattern, small blue cells, occasional uh, microcystic uh, appearance, um, as we see here, uh, with this uh, sieve-like pattern um, and a very desmoplastic uh, stromal response, high-grade nuclei, well, higher-grade nuclei than what we've seen in these other adnexal tumors, uh, much uh, higher NC ratios, um, occasional nucleoli, as you can see at higher magnification here. So that's a quick tour through some of the uh, uh, uncommon uh, adnexal type neoplasms that may be encountered in the vulva. Um, our final sign out of this case was adenoid cystic carcinoma of the vulva, uh, deeply invasive um, and uh, uh, certainly warranting uh, surgical uh, treatment to get good margins on a lesion like this. Well, thank you again for uh, joining us for this session of uh, Digital Slides uh, Review and Sign Out. Uh, we hope that uh, you'll uh, subscribe and share some comments, uh, topics that you'd like to see. If you'd like to look at the, video, the uh, digital slides in more detail, uh, the link to those uh, slides is uh, posted in the, in the uh, description of the video. And uh, as always, please feel free to reach out to me uh, here at the University of Oklahoma. Until next time, we hope that you'll in, in, uh, join us again soon, and we'll see you then.